So now let's move on to our uh, next topic, which is memory management in vSphere 8.x. So in this particular module, we're going to talk about some of the memory reclamation techniques, what VM kernel is having it, and then how it uses these techniques to reclaim the memory and help you with the memory over commitment. So you might have heard about something called memory over commitment, right? You have a 8 GB of memory on your ESXi host, but still you are able to create VMs with the 12 GB of memory or 16 GB of memory. How that magic happens, right? So that is where in the backend VMware have some memory reclamation techniques. And in this particular module, we're going to go and talk about those memory management techniques. So now before we go and talk about memory management techniques, let's go and understand the memory a little bit on the memory side, basically that how memory allo uh, allocation happens in a traditional world, right? So if you really see in this particular slide, it says that virtual machine has a several levels of memory. See, this is what I keep saying that virtualization has a additional layers, right? That is the reason the troubleshooting is way more difficult, complicated, complex than your physical world, because there are many layers are involved. If you look at in this particular diagram, See, we do have a guest operating. So this is your virtual machine. This is your virtual machine. This is your ESXi host. So you have a one ESXi host where you're deploying just one of the virtual machine, but you could deploy multiple virtual machines. That is what we have been keep discussing throughout our discussion, right? Now, when you look at the virtual machine, right? So whenever we create a virtual machine, we assign some memory to that virtual machine during the creation of the VM itself. And that memory, we call it as a guest operating system, physical memory. Right. Let's say I created a virtual machine with the 2 GB of memory. So this 2 GB will become the physical memory for that virtual machine or the operating system, which you are going to install inside that virtual machine. But when you install or when you instantiate any application or when you install any application, application also required a memory, right? Because ultimately application is the one which is going to consume one of some of the memory pages from the guest OS memory, right? So what will happen when you instantiate any application, you install any application, application requires some memory and that memory, which is consumed by the application running inside your virtual machine, we call that memory as a guest operating system, virtual memory. So that becomes guest operating system, virtual memory consumed by the application. And that application memory will be mapped with some of the memory pages of this guest OS physical memory. But then if you really see in the virtual world, we do have a ESXi hypervisor. Now, ESXi hypervisor would be having a 16 GB of memory, for example. Then some of the memory pages have to be mapped with this 2 GB, right? Because there would be other virtual machines would be running with the 2 GB memory each. So some of the 2 GB pages will be mapped to VM1. Some of the 2 GB pages will be mapped to VM2. So that particular memory we call host machine physical memory. This is also physical memory from the VM perspective, OS perspective. This is also physical memory. But this physical memory from the guest OS perspective, this physical memory is actually a memory which is present inside your ESXi server box. So we do have a three different uh, kind of memory layers. If you could see that guest OS virtual memory, guest OS physical memory, and these two memory scope is very much limited to the virtual machine. And then we do have a, one of the other memory called physical memory, which is actually the memory which is present in your ESXi box. So if you really see that how the allocation is happening, See, as when you deploy a virtual machine, you install operating system inside that virtual machine and you instantiate, let's say one application. So as when you instantiate our application, if you really see that what is happening, let's say there's an orange color page is here. So this orange color pay memory page have been mapped to one of the memory page of your OS memory, right? The 2 GB memory, what you have assigned, but actually this 2 GB memory pages is somewhere getting mapped to your physical host machine memory. That is where the mapping is happening. Because this is again a virtual memory from, from the VM kernel perspective, right? The operating system sees it as a physical memory, but we know that it's a virtual memory. Somewhere this memory is getting mapped to the physical memory in your ESXi box. Again, your application requests for some memory. So application is requesting for memory. The operating system will allocate some memory. So that's where the mapping will happen. And some of the pages will be mapped to this memory. But we know that a virtual machine is writing something on this memory pages, ESX has to back this memory pages and that's where it will allocate some of the pages of its machine machine memory to this. So that is where the entire process happens, right? Similarly, your application is asking for another some of the memory pages. This When application is asking, it will be asking to the guest operating system. Guest operating system will say that, okay, I have some memory, he will write it here. But we know that the whatever the memory pages he's writing, it's again a virtual memory. So it has to be backed by physical memory and that is where the physical memory 
pages have been written right this is how the allocation happens in the virtual world right so now what is this guest os virtual memory if you really see that guest os virtual memory is presented to the application by the operating system so whatever memory which is being presented to the applications which is actually managed by the underlying guest operating system we call it as a virtual memory physical guest os physical memory guest os physical memory is presented to the virtual machine but managed by the vm kernel so that is the memory which is actually presented to the virtual machine during the creation of the virtual machine but who is managing that memory your vm kernel right and then the last we have a host machine physical memory so that is again a physical memory but it is actually managed by your esxi server box right so host machine memory that is managed by the vm kernel provides a contiguous addressable memory space that is used by the virtual machine so this is actually the physical memory actually if you say right when you open up your server box and you say that i have a 128 gb of physical memory that memory is nothing we call it as a host machine physical memory because that is your actually physical memory pages but on top of that we are creating a vms we are creating a virtual machines defining vm with the 2 gb memory 4 gb memory 6 gb memory right so that becomes your guest os guest os memory but a physical memory from the os perspective and then we have application application will always have a virtual memory which is uh, will be presented to the applications by the operating system so that is the, the what it is now how this memory allocation happens right so in general how this memory allocation happens so if you really see that in this example consider this example as your server box it's your bare metal server let's say this is my bare metal server no virtualization because this is a basic concept of operating system right so this is my bare metal server let's say this bare metal server each memory page whatever the memory pages you are seeing in the different color let's say each page is a 1 gb page for the sake of discussion so it's become a 1 gb page here 1 gb page is here so 1 3 4 5 6 7 8 so you can consider that it is my server box having 8 gb memory right this is my physical windows server box which is having a 8 gb memory now what is happening you go and instantiate application inside your server box let's say you instantiate some application inside your windows uh, operating system so how does it happen so there is something called allocated list and free list so every operating system will be maintaining two list one would be free list where it will tell you that what all the memory pages are free at this moment allocated list means what all the memory pages have been already allocated to the virtual machine to the application so that is where your operating system will be maintaining two list called allocated list and free list free list will be having free memory pages which can be allocated to the new request allocated list will be these memory pages have been al already allocated this much memory have already been allocated to the existing running applications that is where the operating system maintain these two table so now let's look at this uh, diagram how it happens basically so let's say your application is started asking for memory right to the operating system so now in this example if you really see that if you look at this application has this application have asked for 4 gb memory pages right So here it has asked for four GB memory pages. One memory pages is a orange. This orange have been mapped it here by the operating system. That is where it's in the allocated list. Then this is the blue one. So the application has again asked for another memory page. It has been mapped by this memory page in the operating system memory, and it has been moved to the allocated list because these two have been allocated as of now. Then application asked for another memory pages. So this application is asking for the memory. It has been mapped. by the operating system and it has been moved to the allocated list as you could see that then your application is again asking for some memory so it has been marked as a black color as you could see that it will be mapped to the pages in your operating system and that's where you do see this is also allocated list right so out of 8 gb we can consider that 4 gb pages have been already allocated which means 4 gb memory is already consumed and whatever pages have not been assigned to any of the application right you could see that these are in the free list right so if any new application is being launched or this application asked for more memory pages then operating system will be taking some of the pages from here and then will be moving it them to the allocated list so this is how it happens allocation deallocation right now this is the example of allocation let's assume that this is the example of allocation now what happens 
if let's say application frees up some memory. So this animation is not there, but I'll just try to explain you. So what happens is whenever application needs a memory, it go and talk to the operating system. Operating system is allocating the memory and then moving these pages to the allocated list from free list to the allocated list because earlier it was in free list. Now it is allocated list. Let's assume that. Let's assume that I'll try to create a one more application with the yellow color, right? So this is the yellow color application and it is getting mapped to this yellow color pages, right? Which means this pages will move from free list to the allocated list, right? Because it has been allocated to the application. But now, what about the scenario where application come and say that, let's say you, you terminated that application, assume it, or maybe earlier application was asking for 4 GB, 5 GB memory pages. Now it's not asking for 5 GB memory pages. Some of the memory pages have been released by the application. The application come and the operating, come and tell the operating system. Okay. You have allocated me 5 GB pages, but I need only 1 GB now. So what will happen? The application, sorry, this application have a mechanism. It will make some call like a free call or D D allocation call to the operating system that I am not using this memory anymore. So what will happen? If it is not using this memory anymore, then what operating system will do? Whatever the linking was here, right? It will remove all this linking. The operating system will remove all this linking and move these pages from allocated list to the free list. Right? So now the, the point, what I'm trying to explain it here, whenever application needs a memory, it talks to the operating system. Operating system, look at the free list, allocated some pages to the application, and then, you know, it keep updating its allocated list and free list. The moment application come and say that, no, no, I don't need uh, the sum of the memory pages out of 5 GB. I need only 1 GB now. Then what will happen? It will free those memory pages. It will ask your operating system that please free up these memory pages. Then what operating system will do? It will claim this memory back and put it into the free list. So that whenever the next time new application needs a memory, it can give it to the new memory pages, right? That is the concept of allo allocation and deallocation, right? So you will see that this application, this application and this operating system, they are continuously in sync. They actually work hand in hand. Whenever it needs a memory, it go and talk to the operating system because it knows that this operating system is the one who's going to give me memory. But the good thing is that whenever it does not need a memory, it doesn't hold that memory. Application does not hold that memory. Whenever it does not need the memory, it will go and tell the operating system, okay, I don't need uh, these many memory pages. Please go and free up those pages. So what will happen? These tables will be keep updating based on the communication between your application and the operating system. And that is the transparency happens in your physical operating system, right? This is how your traditional operating system works. Okay. And this is how memory management works in your traditional operating system. But then in the virtualization world, but in the virtualization world, we have a one more layer of complexity is hypervisor. Because now in virtualization world, this is running, this is not running in a server box, a physical bare metal server box. In this virtualization, what is happening is this example, what I've explained to you, right? This is now in running inside the virtual machine. Because it is running inside the virtual machine, the complexities are different. Because the memory is not being managed by this operating system. Man memory is actually managed by one more layer behind below this operating system, which is a VM kernel, which is your ESXi hypervisor. So your actual physical memory is owned and managed by your ESXi operating system, not the guest operating system running inside the virtual machine. That is the reason there are some complications. Okay. And what are those complications? This is what we're going to talk about it. If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's a India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands on labs. 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. 
we do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals you would be getting opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one in person doubt clarification session with the vmware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for l3 or senior level profiles now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen these are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us so what are you waiting for if you want to become vmware expert or want to master this technology then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address thank you